Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. Kind of homemade. There was a similar problem. I just changed it a little bit. So first of all, I want you to notice that something is special with the exponents. And if you go ahead and add those up, x over x plus 1 and 1 over x plus 1, you get x plus 1 over x plus 1, which is equal to 1. Nice. This means that the sum of the two exponents equals 1, or we can write one of them in terms of the other. I'm going to pick the second one, so we can go ahead and write 1 over x plus 1 as 1 minus this, which is x over x plus 1. You could also obtain this identity by writing this one as x plus 1 minus x, and then splitting up into two fractions. Make sense? Because this is 1. Now, we were able to express the other exponent, the second one, in terms of the first one. So now let's go ahead and replace the first exponent by something. So we're going to use substitution. Let me rewrite the original problem here. 2 to the power x over x plus 1 minus 2 to the power 1 over x plus 1 equals 1. At this point, you probably started guessing, but that's okay. Um, so what am I going to do? I'm going to replace x over x plus 1 with something. How about b? Okay, good. Maybe we're going to find something like b uh, to be or not to be. So from here we get the following. Since uh, this was 1 minus uh, x over x plus 1, 1 over x plus 1 is just going to be 1 minus b. Because their sum is 1. Make sense? So now we get the following. 2 to the power b minus 2 to the power 1 minus b equals 1. Now this equation is... Is it solvable? Uh, we can turn it into uh, a quadratic. You'll see in a little bit how. Let's go ahead and split it up. 2 to the power 1 minus b can be written as 2 to the power 1 divided by 2 to the power b by using rules of exponents. And then uh, 2 to the power b repeats itself, so we can kind of replace it with something else. How about a different variable like a, right? If 2 to the power b is equal to a, then we get a minus 2 over a equals 1. Multiply both sides by a, you get a squared minus 2 equals a. Awesome. Now from here, let's try to solve for a, and then we're going to back substitute, and then back substitute again. Because we have to go back to x, right? But this is a simple equation. It is factorable. You could also use quadratic formula if you don't like factoring. I actually do like factoring. So the idea is you got to find two numbers whose product is negative 2 and whose sum is negative 1. And those numbers are negative 2 and positive 1, just like the x method, remember? But we use x method when the coefficient of a squared is different from 1. Okay? Something like 3a squared. So this can be written as a minus 2 multiplied by a plus 1 equals 0. Awesome. So let's go ahead and solve for a, and then we're going to back substitute twice to find x. And then with the x value, uh, we're going to proceed, and that's pretty much it. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, and oh, yes, I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. I almost forgot. And that, this is kind of interesting. Uh, we're going to be looking at a couple things. So from here, we get two solutions. A equals 2 and A equals negative 1. Now, what is A? A is 2 to the power B. Okay, that's good. 2 to the power B. Set it equal to that. The first one, uh-oh, the second one doesn't look good, but guess what? The first one, even though it looks good, it's not going to end up good. Anyways, let's not spoil the surprise from here. B equals 1, and from here, B is not real, not a real number, okay? But we're going to find out what it is by using, uh, by writing negative 1 is a complex number, and Euler's formula, so on and so forth. But let's go with the first one first, since it looks trivial. B is 1, but what is B? B is x over x plus 1, isn't it? Yes, that's right. So we can replace B with x over x plus 1. If I do that, I'm going to set this equal to x over x plus 1 equals 1. Cross multiply, you get x plus 1 equals x. Uh-oh, that's not good either. Because then one more than a number cannot equal the same number. But if you don't believe that, subtract x, you're going to get... 1 equals 0, which is absolutely nonsense. So, there are no solutions, not even the complex ones. Basically, no solutions at all. 
How about the second piece? Okay, from here we're gonna get a non-real number, a complex number. Let's go ahead and find out. But for that, I need to write negative one as a complex number. So quickly I do my coordinate system, real and imaginary. Negative one can be written as negative one plus zero i. This is gonna be my x coordinate, this is gonna be y, my y coordinate. But don't confuse that with the original x. If you want, you can use a and b. So we're gonna go negative one units here and no height. Make sense? And the angle, the uh, theta or the alpha we're gonna use is gonna be pi radians. That's what it makes with the positive x-axis. So this is what you need to be able to write a complex number. R times e to the power i theta. R is the modulus or the absolute value. The absolute value is basically the distance from zero. And R is one in this case. And you can tell the absolute value of negative one is positive one. And theta is what? Pi. Cool. Having... Having given these, uh, we can go ahead and write our number, negative 1, as 1 times e to the power i pi. But that's just the principal branch. If you want the general form, then negative 1 can be written as e to the power i times 2n plus 1 times pi, where i is an n is an integer. So odd multiples of pi is always going to give you the same value with pi. All right? Cool, cool. Now, let's go ahead and plug this into our equation. We have 2 to the power b equals negative 1. 2 to the power b equals negative 1. And that is equal to e to the power i times 2n plus 1 pi. Some people write the pi i later if you want. You can write it like this too. doesn't matter. 2n plus 1 pi i. Okay. This is our equation. And we can solve this by taking the logarithm of both sides. Let's go on ln natural log both sides, ln 2 to the power b equals ln e to the power 2n plus 1 pi times i, and then b to the front and this power to the front, b times ln 2 equals 2n plus 1 times pi i. Now here ln e is 1, so I don't need to write it. Now b can be written as 2n plus 1 multiplied by pi i divided by ln 2. So that's b, but remember we have to go back to x. Let's go ahead and plug it in. We're going to do a couple different things and I'm going to show you the graph. b is x over x plus 1, right? From here. So let's go ahead and replace b with x over x plus 1. And if you want, you can kind of skip with, uh, with the middle thing because that looks complicated. Let's go ahead and just solve this basic equation. Then we can replace b with what it is. Make sense? Cross multiply x equals bx plus b. And here our goal is to solve for x because that's our goal, isn't it? So now let's go ahead and solve for x here. Put the x's together. Factor out. Divide. And you got the answer. Now re replace b with what it is. b is this guy over here. 2n plus 1 pi i over ln2 divided by 1 minus that. Now obviously we're going to have a common denominator when we simplify this. Multiply both the top and the bottom by ln2 if you want. But from here x becomes 2n plus 1 times pi i divided by ln2 minus 2n plus 1 times pi i. Now if you don't like this and one or two uh, modify the denominator, get rid of the i at the bottom, you can multiply by the complex conjugate and it's going to be this one and top and bottom distribute and take care of i squared equals negative 1 so on and so forth and you'll get the answer. I'm going to leave it to you and show you the graph. So when you look at the graph you don't see any intersection points because there are no real solutions. Remember the first one gave us nonsense, the second one only gave us a complex solution which is not visible here but what else is going on with this function? I want to show you real quick. If you take the limit as x approaches infinity, notice that you take the limit for the exponent. This becomes 1 and this becomes 0. So it's like 2 minus 1 equals 1. So as x approaches infinity, y approaches 1, which means we have a horizontal asymptote. That's the dotted line. As x approaches negative infinity, the same thing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.